we've got one of our favorite guests on on today, Blaze Bailey. The one, the only. With the bread. There he is. Hello. Is anybody sad? <laughs> Cut it down. <laughs> I can make some voice. On the metal voice. So somebody uh, think. Hey guys, how you doing now? All right. Perfect. Perfect. Lots of good stuff here with Infinite Entanglement. Infinite Entanglement. After four years, a brand new album, a concept album. Yeah, it's big. It's Part big. of a trilogy. A trilogy. And I had this idea to write my own book. I had a story that, uh, kind of coming from the character from 10th Dimension that I really wanted to do. And we started work on it and um, we just, we had too many songs for one album. And I thought, you know what, when I did 10th Dimension, I had to keep that down to a certain amount of time because I was working with the record company, I had deadlines to meet. I thought this time, uh, I think this is a really big story. And so I started thinking about it like Dune and oh. uh, Lord of the Rings and, some, and something like that. I thought, well, if I was going to make do what exactly what I wanted to do, then I would do it in three albums. And... Um, well, I am the record company, so I can do what I want to do. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, and so I've done it in three albums. Well, I'm doing it in three albums, and this is my first studio album, full metal studio album for uh, for four years, and uh, it's part one of a trilogy, and um, the story is told across the three albums, and uh, so far it's turned out really, really well. And uh, the first few people now have got their pre-orders delivered. And uh, they're really enjoying it. The feedback I've had is is great. Well, we've heard it. We've heard the album, Blaze. Quickly. You've heard it. Yes, yes. 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 We've heard the album, uh -huh. and uh, I'm going to give you my opinion. It it sounds like the soundtrack of my life. It sounds oh, like okay. it, you, you're grass. It's it's sort of like the best of Blaze. I mean, from acoustic to heavy metal to hard rock, it's everything in one. And I thought it was really cool. A very cool album, by the way. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, that was, but I mean, I only heard it once or twice, so I didn't really get, you know, uh, into it. Can you tell me, maybe in like 30 seconds, the mm. storyline? I'm just trying to figure it out. Well, the, to keep it very simple, yeah. it's about a man who does not know if he is human. Okay. And it's his personal journey, and he is on a mission to discover one of the new Kepler planets. You know, Kepler has discovered all these new planets and it's set a hundred years in the future and he's on a, a spaceship and it's how he deals with the fact that he will be one of the first people ever to live for a thousand years because of the advances in technology and how he deals with that. And, uh, and the question, is, is he human or not? And that's it in a nutshell. And the story expands from there, and we discover a lot of different things. First, his emotions and how he feels, but also why he's there and how how he is reacting to the circumstances. And everything is not what it seems. He's been chosen for the mission, and um, we find out why, and, and that's part of the of the overall story. So it's a kind of mystery horror in a way, set in space, and um, this is part one of it, so I'm hoping that you'll like the rest as well. I've been listening to a lot of concept albums lately, and this is an album where you can listen to the individual song, you don't necessarily have to hear the whole album, and enjoy the individual song. Something like Dream Theater just came out with an album, you gotta listen to the whole thing from start to finish as they all connect. But this is definitely an album where you can listen to it as a complete, or you can listen to it on a song per song basis. Is that an accurate description of it? Yeah, that, that, well, that is how I started with the whole idea, was I, I, want, I had to do something that I would enjoy. So I really wanted to do something more in the War of the Worlds style um, and uh, in the um, Operation Mindcrime style. I wanted it so, as, as a listener, you can enjoy each song without knowing the story but if you want to look at the sleeve notes if you want to get deeper in it then you'll see the connections 
you don't have to listen to all the songs to know the connections and the the order of the songs isn't in a way that you have to play it from start to finish either and you won't really know where all of the songs fit until that third album comes out and explains to you the whole story and all of the details. What are the plans for the launch dates for the second and third album? Are we that? Are you? Are you there yet? Or well, we have um, half of album two. We have half of the songs ready for that, and we have some of the music and one of the songs for album three. So we kind of have the ending and a bit of the middle. So as we're going along on tour and I'm writing the, the rest of the story, then I'm, uh, th then we'll come up with the, uh, the rest of the songs. I hope. What I've enjoyed with this one is, is having the liberation of not having to connect everything to reality or, or directly to me to be able to use somebody else's emotions and somebody else's thoughts and have more than one set of eyes to look at the world through. That's been really liberating and I've enjoyed it very much. So you talked about you're going to be talking to the fans, you're going to choose a few fans to be on the album. I mean, did you, did you actually do... I didn't really... Again, I heard it like once or twice very quickly, the album. But where were the fans placed? Or I mean, Tell us about well, that. My central character is called William Black. He's related to the character that I did on my... Uh, concept album, the tenth I mentioned, okay. and he has uh, a nightmare slash dream, and in that it says, "Where are you?" And there are it, it's like messages, as if he's receiving radio messages directly into his brain, and um, and I had the idea that I wanted a lot of different languages. I wanted people to say where are you in their own language so I thought well this would be a great opportunity to involve my fans so I asked everybody that did the membership pre-order to send me a clip a sound clip the best quality that they could of them saying in their own language where are you and that song is called the dreams of William Black Oh, okay. And um, and it's worked just much much better than I ever thought it would. All of the voice actors say "Where are you?" and all of the fans say "Where are you?" and um, there was so it was a competition, but I was the main judge of the competition, and mainly it was a quality issue. And almost every clip of the hundred or so that was sent in, I was able to use because uh, they, everybody made a real effort to do uh, uh, a high quality clip. So, um, so it, it's turned out very cool. I think it's quite an atmospheric song as well. And it leads up, really, that song, The Dreams of William Black, leads up. It's the intro for the next song, which is called Calling You Home. Yeah, great song. Yeah, we got Jimmy and I were just talking before we got online with you about the, the dramatic vocals. I mean, you're, you're really inhabiting this character. Uh, obviously, you wrote it. Uh, you know, do you, do you see any any acting in your near future? Because I mean, <laughs> you know, you really the, the, you really hit the character very the X -Files. well. Well, I, I think my wife thinks I'm a pretty good actor. <laughs> That's uh, when I'm talking about the cost of motorcycle parts. <laughs> so, so uh, I've really, uh, I've really enjoyed doing it. But what I wanted to do as well, I've got some really loyal fans who follow me through everything, no matter what I do, and I'm very, very lucky to have that support. And um, with this, what I did was um, I set up a Skype account for the people that pre-ordered the limited edition. And they, we set up days where they could phone me and, uh, and we'd have a conversation. And I really listened very, very hard to what they wanted and what they liked. What did they like about me? Oh, really? and what they liked about a Blaze Bailey album. And that gave me a huge amount of confidence to just be myself and not to try too hard. It gave me the confidence to really follow 
the the way that I wanted to go with the melodies and the lyrics in the songs because often I've worked with musicians in the past and everybody has their own ideas about how a song should end up and and I thought well I really want it to be me and all the bits that I spoke to with the fans on Skype they all the things that they described about what they like about a Blaze Bailey album those were all the things I thought great that gives me confidence to just do things in a slightly different way that feel very natural to me so it's not the obvious choice of melody, it's not the obvious place to go, it's, it's not the obvious format uh, in places, and, um, and that's really, really helped. So, so really, I've been, this time I've actually sat back and just li- and listened and been guided by my fans, and, and I think I've got a great result, because if you listen to the acoustic song, then... One of the things people like about my acoustic stuff is that you can hear the voice and it's so dramatic and it has turned out really, really well, the acoustic song. I'm so pleased with it. It's very, very moody. And I want an album that I would like and I want something I can listen to a hundred times. I want I want to create that holy diver, um, that Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell, the Iron Maiden number of the beast i want to create one of those classics you know and i i each time i do an album that's what i try to do and and i always think of my fans we see a lot of times now that a book will accompany the uh, release like uh clockwork angels with yes, rush their yes. concept album or the 6 a.m stuff that nikki six is doing so is there any possibility that this will, will this whole story will be released in a, in a book form yeah i'm planning the book Great. Uh, it, it's absolutely there is um, I'm writing a book and it's uh, it's a science fiction story so if the the people that are part of the membership that paid the extra to have the, the special version of the album they've got a, ma- a special magazine with that with exclusive photos and they've also got parts of my book just the rough unedited parts the raw pages from the book that i've based some of the songs on so uh so yeah it'll be with album three the book will come out and uh well it's going to be a limited edition just for my fans i don't think it's going to go into major stores or anything like that but it will be a book and what will happen is just like you said about the songs before You won't really need to read the book to enjoy the album, but if you want to know more about the story, if you have the three albums and you have the book, then you'll know the complete story, and I think that's a lot of fun. So, uh, so I'll be working on that. Whenever the van, whenever the ride in the van is too bumpy on this tour, I'll be typing away at my book. The pre-order for the album, the CD, the album on this video, so everybody could just click and they can pre-order the album, or buy the album, or download the album when it's available. Also, we'll put your tour date. So tell us about this massive tour that you're undertaking. Well, it's um, it's 64 shows at the moment around Europe, and then there's some other shows falling into place. Um, they're talking about taking me to South America again, and I'm coming over to Canada towards the end of the year to do some shows. I'm very, very excited about that. So there you go. Pick up the new pre-order or pick up the new Blaze Bailey album, Infinite Entanglement. Go catch him on tour. He's coming through Europe. He's going to come to North America hopefully very soon. Canada in September-ish. Sci-fi novelist. Novelist. I mean, potential potential actor. (laughs) <laughs> well, Blaze Bailey, the man, the Shakespeare one Shakespeare enthusiast. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm very, very lucky to be a professional singer, to be a small underground artist and have so many loyal fans and to be able to make a living as a professional singer. I just have to say a huge thank you thank you thank you to all my fans in canada and all over the world that have supported me and believed in me and pre-ordered the album so thank you very very much guys and also a made in quebec says hi just so you know oh yeah 
well, those those guys are coming out with me uh, on the tour, so uh, it's going to be up. It's going to be a lot of fun. We had an absolute, we had a hoot last time we were out. <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited about it. All right, Blaze. Thank you very much for taking the call. Thank you very much for the interview. We will see you very soon, and we'll do another okay. interview. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, and good luck with your show. Thank you so much for inviting me to be one of your special naked guests. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank you very much, please.